Welcome to another lesson on integrating vectored valued functions. In this lesson, we'll determine the specific antiderivative of a vectored valued function given an initial condition. Let's take a look at our first example. We want to find the antiderivative of r prime of t that satisfies the initial condition r of zero. So to find the antiderivative, we want to integrate r prime of t. So we'll have the integral of three t squared times i minus six square root t j. And we learned from our first lesson, we now integrate each component individually. So now we'll have the integral of three t squared dt times i and then minus the integral of six for square root t, we'll write t to the one-half dt times j. And now we'll integrate. So we'll have three times the integral of t squared would be t to the third divided by three plus a constant of integration, which we'll call c sub one times i. And then we'll have minus six times, if we add one to one-half, that's three-halves, so we'll have t to the three-halves divided by three-halves, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of two-thirds, plus c sub two times j. And now we'll simplify. Three over three simplifies to one, so we have t to the third plus c sub one i minus Six and three simplify, one and two. So we have four t to the three halves plus c sub two times j. Notice how here we have a family of vectored valued functions because of the c sub one and c sub two. But because we're given the initial condition r of zero, we can find the value of c sub one and c sub two for the specific antiderivative vector valued function. So if r of zero equals one i plus two j. Notice how this tells us when t is zero, the x component must be one and the y component must be two. So if t equals zero, looking at the x component, we would have zero cubed plus c sub one must equal one. So we know c sub one must equal one. But we have to be careful about the y component. Again, when t is zero, this tells us that minus four times zero to the three halves plus c sub two must equal positive two. So notice how this is zero, but the result here is negative c sub two equals two, and therefore c sub two is equal to negative two which means the vectored value function that satisfies this initial condition is r of t equals t to the third plus one times i and then minus four t to the three halves minus two times j. Let's take a look at a second example. We want to find the antiderivative of r prime of t given the initial condition r of zero. So again, the first step is to integrate the given vectored valued function. So we'll have the integral of sine two t i minus cosine t j plus one divided by the quantity one plus t squared K. Now we'll integrate each component individually. Notice to integrate sine two t, we have to perform u substitution, where u is equal to two t, and differential u is equal to two dt. So if we divide both sides by two, notice how we'll have an extra factor of one half when writing in terms of u. And the integral of sine u is negative cosine u, so we'll have negative one-half 
cosine 2t plus c sub 1 times i minus the integral of 2 cosine t, which will be minus 2 sine t, plus c sub 2 times j. Then the integral of 1 divided by the quantity 1 plus t squared will be equal to arctangent t. So we'll have plus arctangent t plus c sub 3 times k. Notice here we have a family of vector valued functions. So now we'll use the initial condition here to find the values of c sub 1, c sub 2, and c sub 3 to find our particular antiderivative. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. So now looking at the x component, when t is zero, negative one-half cosine zero plus c sub one must equal three. Looking at the y component, notice that minus two sine zero plus c sub two must equal negative two. Looking at the z component, notice that arctangent zero plus c sub three must equal positive one. Well, cosine zero is equal to one, so here we have negative one-half plus c sub one equals three. Adding one-half to both sides, that would have c sub one equals three-and-a-half, or seven-halves. You need to be a little careful here. Sine zero is zero. Because of this negative sign here, it's going to be negative c sub two equals negative two. So c sub two equals positive two. And then finally over here on the right, arctangent zero is zero, so we have c sub three equals one. Which means our specific antiderivative vectored valued function is r of t equals negative one-half cosine two t plus seven halves times i minus two sine t plus two times j plus arctangent t plus one times k. Okay, that's going to do it for these two examples. Next we'll take a look at definite integration involving vectored valued functions. I hope you found this helpful.